In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an upload form and upload it to DigitalOcean Spaces, or you can use AWS's S3. And it's really straightforward. There is not a lot of code involved, but let me give you a quick demo. You choose your file as you normally would, so you can pick any file. It lists it below, so it looks really pretty. So you can have multiple files. You can remove them if you wish and cancel the whole thing if you wish to. But then you can click upload and you get a progress bar. That sounds really quite hard and scary. But actually, it's not. And let me show you. To achieve this, we're going to be using Next.js, a React framework, and also Prime React, which is a great UI library, and DigitalOcean Spaces. But it's very similar to AWS's S3. And I'll actually be using AWS's S3 client for this. If that sounds interesting to you, give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed below. So the first thing we want to do is actually create our Next.js project. And we can do this with the npx command, npx create next app. I'm going to use the latest version. And then the last parameter is what you want to call the project. So we could say video upload demo, for example. So let's hit enter. npx will do its magic. It will install, as you can see, it's installing React and various other libraries and tools as well. Now it's complete. We must navigate into our new project, which we called video upload demo. And it gives us the commands that we need here. So we're navigating into that. And then we're going to run this just to check the app works. I always recommend doing this. So now it's running. It's saying it's running on localhost 3000. Let's give localhost 3000 a refresh. So the app's running. That looks good. So the next thing I recommend doing is opening it in VS Code and removing some of the boilerplate code that you don't need. Next thing we do, we go to pages. The two files we're really mostly interested in is index.js, which is the page that you see in the browser. So we can remove a lot of this boilerplate code. And then we're going to want an API file as well. So we can upload the file from our UI to the DigitalOcean spaces. So let's remove some of this at the moment. So let's just start at the bottom in the footer. I want to remove all this powered by, we'll just say powered by open source. And let's remove all this here as well. And we don't need probably almost everything in the main. We'll keep the header and we'll change it to welcome to our video uploader. Okay. And then we're going to put the upload part in here. So the next thing we need to do is probably install the UI tool that we want to use, Prime React. If you go to the Prime React website, it's really easy to get started. npm install Prime React. So that sounds good. Let's do that. Now that's done, it does also recommend installing icons. So we probably should do that too. Done. And we need to also install React Transition Group as well because this is utilized by the UI framework. OK, now we've got that. From the Prime React documentation, we need to install some styles. So let's import the Prime React styles to make sure that it looks good. You can use different themes and you can create your own. There's lots of great things you can do. I'm just going to pick the default one they have in their documentation for the moment. And now let's go to their upload. And you're going to see really how straightforward it is. And you can write this from scratch, but really you want to focus on your apps business logic, like the value that your app brings. If you're building a house, you don't really want to create the bricks. You just want to build the house that you want because, you know, bricks are very, very similar. And, and same with UI tools that you can use, Bootstrap, Material Design. They're all very, very similar. And you don't really want to get into the nitty gritty of that. So I suggest we use the first one. It says advanced, but it looks pretty good. I gave you a demo earlier. So we do need to do the import. So let's just grab the import and we can import it. I'll put it just above here. And then the next thing we want to do is probably just grab the getting started one. So let's do that. And we'll put that under the header that we created earlier. And we'll hit Save. Let's run the app again, npm run dev, and see how it looks. It won't actually work as an upload because we haven't done the API part of this yet. But it's going to look pretty good, I think. As you can see, we've updated the title, and we've got the uploader. So if I pick a file again, it will add it. Obviously, if I hit upload now, it's not going to work because we haven't done the API yet. So let's do that next. But that looks pretty good. I told you it would be quick and easy. I know some of you didn't believe me. But you know, we're all here to learn. I'm sure you can leave some comments below on how I can improve this further as well. So to get an API working in a Next.js, you just actually need to add a file to the API folder. And I do have an example already, which is kind of almost like a hello world. But we can delete that. And I'm going to add another file to here, which we're going to call upload.js. And in this file, we're going to import file system from the file system. We'll need this for the uh, data stream coming in. 
And then let's also import AWS from the AWS SDK, which we will want to install as well. Another import we want to use is Formidable. Um, it's a really good library that helps with dealing with the form data that's coming in, especially with uh, streams. And I'm going to show it to you in a moment. Copilot has helped us out there, so that's pretty good. Actually, let's install those before we forget. So if we stop the application, do npm install, we said AWS uh, SDK, and we also want Formidable too. That's now done. Okay, let's get it up and running again because we'll need it in a moment. So first thing we want to do is create an S3 client. So we can say create a constant because I don't think it's going to change. And we'll say it's AWS S3. Thank you very much, Copilot. We're going to say the endpoint is going to be slightly different. We're going to use DigitalOcean. So we can say that we'll get that from an environment variable because we don't want this to be in our application. We want to change it in an environment variable. So if we say process, then environment variable, that's the, that's the node process, and then we get the environment variable, and we can say DO for short for DigitalOcean, and we can say uh, spaces URL, because we're using DigitalOcean spaces. You can call this what you want, just make sure in your environment file or your environment variable has the same name. So next we wanna do region. So our region is gonna be fra one, and you'll get this from DigitalOcean, I'll show you that in a moment as well. And then we're gonna want credentials. So our credentials are going to be, again, environment variables, but our credentials are going to be, we need the access key. That's pretty good. I think I called this ID rather than key, but you know, thank you very much, uh, GitHub Copilot. That's pretty, pretty good. And we also want the secret access key, absolutely. And I think that's what I called it in my environment variables. So that's pretty good too. Thank you so much, Copilot. And then let's close this off. And I am missing a colon on that. I know some of you spotted that, so thank you very much. I appreciated you yelling at the screen saying, Eddie, you're missing a colon. I heard you. We need to do one last thing, actually, uh, before we get into the actual handling of the API request. We do want to change uh, the config. We need to make sure we turn off the body parser for our API. And we can do this with Next.js like so. So body parser false. By default, it's true. Now let's get into handling the requests. So now we've got that set up, and that's probably the hard part out of the way. We'll do default. We want it to be async, uh, and it's going to be handle. This is how it works in Next.js. We get a request coming in, and then we also get a response too. So this is where we're going to use formidable. So we can say a constant form, and we'll just say it's formidable, and we'll create that function. And then let's use that uh, constant. So we can say form and we want to pass the request coming in and then we create an async function, which is going to have error fields and files. That looks pretty good. Thank you very much, Copilot. Let's just close that off. Let's do a check. Let's make sure if we've got no files coming in, then we don't continue because we probably don't want to. So from this, we can say files and we've called it demo is our form field from our UI here. So that's how things are going to come across from the front end. So if there are no files in demo, let's throw an exception. I mean, there's various things we can do. We can send a response. We could throw an exception. We can just send that for now. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. If we've got this far, let's try and do an upload. So let's do a try catch and we can return S3 client that we created earlier on and we can put the object and then we need to say where we're going to put it. So we will have a bucket and we're going to use our bucket environment variable that we're going to set in a moment as well. Or you could hard code this here, but I think an environment variable works quite well for that. And then we actually want a key and the key is going to be the file name. So I think it's actually better to use the original file name that people uploaded with. You might put a prefix or a suffix on it. So therefore it's unique and they don't overwrite any files. And you're thinking, well, where does the actual file get kind of creative one. How do we get it in there? Well, it's the body field. Oh, Copilot is completing it for us again. We're going to use the file system library. It's part of Node and we're going to create a read stream and we're going to read it from files, demo and path. So this is the file path. This is the temporary location our app has. And so therefore we want to read that file and upload it before it gets destroyed and leaves. 
So you can also put ACL on here if you want. By default, it will be private. So we could say, make it public. Therefore, if we want to display it in the UI for someone else to read, the file is publicly available. So you can specifically mention it's private or you can specifically mention it's read only, but also you could omit it and by default, it would be private. And the way this works is it has, let's put a comma in here. It has um, a callback. So therefore, if it does work and it is successful, we can return a response with a status code of 201, that means it was created, and we can send back a response, either empty or, I don't know, successful, file uploaded, I like that completion, there we go. And let's put the catch, so if something does go wrong, what do we, uh, what do we want to do? Copilot suggests we log it and we send a 500 error uploading file. That's fine, I can make my piece with that. You can customize this to however you like, but I think that's uh, pretty, pretty good. And that's basically it. I mean, there is not uh, much more to it apart from our environment variables. So what we need to do next is actually set these environment variables so they can be uh, used in our app. And the way you do that with Next.js is you create a file and you call it .env.local. And this is gonna be ignored by Git, so your private keys and so forth will not be committed by mistake. And if we go to .git ignore, we can see env.local is ignored. So here are my environment variables. I'm hiding them because I don't want you to have access to my uh, DigitalOcean spaces. I'm gonna show you in a moment how to get these. And if we go in here, let's just check if I haven't missed anything out. So we've got, so if I search for process.env, in our file, we have spaces URL, so do spaces URL, perfect. Then we also have the ID, and we have the ID at the top. And then we have the secret, I have the secret, perfect. But we also have this one, so let me add this one as well. And our bucket is going to be, well, let's find out. So let's go to DigitalOcean. Here we are on my DigitalOcean account and I'm in the spaces section. And if you want to have a play with DigitalOcean for free, I have a link below where you can sign up on one of my affiliate links and you get, I think like a hundred or hundred fifty dollars to play for free on DigitalOcean. And it'll go quite far because spaces is like $5 a month. So when you get like 250 gigs, it's pretty, pretty good. And so what you would do is you would create a new space. And I created one earlier and you give it a name. I've called mine Eddie Hub Videos. And in there you can have subfolders. But to get access to it from your project, you need to manage your keys. When you click on manage keys, it will give you the keys that you need to add to your project that I showed you a moment ago in the environment file. So let's go into here because I actually want to show you that it uploads correctly. So let me go into my space, my bucket, and show you that I've got an existing folder there, but we're going to ignore that for the moment. We're going to upload a file directly into this folder. So let's have a look. So our bucket will be Eddie Hub videos. So I need to go here and say Eddie Hub videos. Hit save. Remember, when you make any changes to this file, to any environment file, you need to stop the application and start it again so it can load in these environment variables. One mistake that I made that I'm sure you all probably noticed, and again, thank you so much for yelling at the screen, is the URL to upload that I got from the documentation is not correct for our app. We actually want to upload to API forward slash upload. So we're not using a relative path here. We're going to use the root on our API. And the way it works on Next.js is it's forward slash API gets you into this folder. And then the name of your file is the rest of the path. So in our case, API upload. Let's hit save. We don't need to restart the app anymore because um, we didn't change an M file. It's just a, a, a normal regular file that the app will automatically reload. So let's choose choose our file. We'll choose a video file. Before I hit upload, let me prove to you there's nothing in here. So I'm gonna refresh this space. There is nothing in our space or bucket, whatever naming convention you wanna use, apart from this existing folder, but we're ignoring that for the moment. I chose my file, it's listed here. Let's hit upload. It says pending, we've got progress. That's looking really good. And we got a 201 back, which is from our API file. We said that's correct. So now if we go back to our bucket and hit refresh, we didn't get a 500, we got a 201, which means created. So fingers crossed, it should be listed here. And you can see the file is listed here. So that was pretty straightforward. Don't forget, if you wanna help support me create more videos, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. I look forward to geeking out with you in our Eddie Hub Discord community, where we chat about open source and getting you the job and clients that you deserve. Thank you for watching.